thy strength. We're here, Lord God, to receive all that you have promised to each one of us. We seek to walk upright before you, Almighty God, for this great work to be done. Yes, God. There's a great work to be done in this earth. And we are thy children. We are seeking to be followers of the Son, Christ Jesus. For he paved the way, showing us how to move upon those in this earth with power and authority, Lord God. We're meek and mild before you. And we're warriors in the kingdom work, Lord God. We're here to be encouraged, to be filled up. We seek that power right now. To those who may be dealing with the Father with challenges they, they cross over from 2020 into 2020. But right now, lay them down. God says, lay them down.
everybody say hallelujah hallelujah you reign forever oh my soul will sing you reign forever oh my soul will sing hallelujah 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 well just stand to your feet stand to your feet all over the building and those of you who are at home come on just stand to your feet Get out of that recliner, get out off that couch, and just stand to your feet. We are in worship. And the Bible said they stood in the presence of the Lord. They lifted their hands, and they began to bless the Lord. And if you're glad about what God has done in your life and what God is doing now, here this first Sunday of 2021, let's begin to give God praise all over this room. And those of you who are there, watching the replay or if you're watching live just begin to give god praise come on let's give him praise god you are good and your mercy endures forever you are king of kings you are lord of lords as pastor hobson said fill us up god fill us up fill us up with your power fill us up with your love fill us up with your joy fill us up with your peace fill us up with all that is you and god we give you praise come on somebody praise him God, you're worthy, 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 you are worthy, you are worthy. Holy, 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 holy. Come on, somebody shout, holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy is the Lord our God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord our God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all, let's give God the glory in this place. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Come on, y'all, let's give God a praise in this place. Come on, y'all. He blessed us to see another year. Truly, he is the Lion of Judah, triumphant in all his ways. Well, good morning, everybody. Hallelujah. We serve an amazing God. Father, we thank you, God, for another year. That this is the year of 
to give God glory together. There's something that happens when we come together on one accord. Oh my God. When the people of God come together and worship. Father, you are faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, we bless your name. Truly God, we thank you, Father, for encouragement. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to worship you. And we come together as a collective body to give you praise. Hallelujah. Can we just lift our hands in this place as a sign of surrender? Oh, 
The names fade away. Let all the other names fade away. Until there's only you. Let all the other names fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Everybody say, hands up.
we just came out of the Christmas season. And it seems like we bless those in the earth more we bless the Savior. We give more time to those in the earth we give to the Savior. It's a time for you to make just a, a minor sacrifice, what God has asked you to do, to give that holy thing into the kingdom of God, the kingdom work. You guys see what our pastor's doing. He shares the different media and here, here at the church, the impact we're having in the community and, and, and continue to push forward, but he can't do it all by himself. It takes us. It takes our time, talents, and resources. He just talked about that over the last two months. It's time for you to be obedient to the will of God to pour into this kingdom ministry. So give today. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. Usher will accommodate you. Those that are streaming, you should be able to see the different ways, whether it's Cash App, Givelify, which I use. Those are here. We do have the debit credit card machine. But make sure that you're giving into this kingdom work because you can never outgive God. You say, well, I would give, I won't have. No, you will have. God will sustain you. The question is, do you have faith to believe that? You believe if you give a little bit of yourself what God pour back into your life, you still have all you need to meet all your needs. He will. Try him. Test him. You cannot outgive God. Try our great I am. The one who owns everything, created everything. The windows of heaven will pour out a blessing. You have no room to receive. You don't have room enough to receive. How would that be? You have no room to receive all the blessings. Share them with others today. So if everyone had an opportunity to prepare your offering, as you please stand, because we're going to release into the atmosphere. And those that are home too, please join in with us. We start this new year out, and being a giver, being a giver to the kingdom of God, to the kingdom work. So as you please repeat with me, I believe that I receive God's best on my seed sown today. I believe that because I'm a giver, God is raising others up to use their power, their influence, and their authority to help me. Therefore, I believe that I am abundantly supplied spiritually, physically, and financially. In Jesus' name, amen. You now the hands of the usher. Give God some praise in this room and those of you who are watching. Come on, give God some praise. He is good and his mercy endures forever. Thank you. What a mighty, 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 mighty God. We serve. What a mighty, 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 mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty, 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 mighty. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus, take your place. Oh, that's a song right there. <laughs> Jesus, take your place. Go oh, say that for yourself. Jesus, take your place. Lift your hands. Come on, stand on your feet and lift your hands and say that. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Come on, your hands straight out. Don't give God a chicken bone, a chicken wing. Come on, stretch your hand out. Come on. Jesus, take your place. Everybody in here, everybody out there. Jesus, take your place. Place. <laughs> Where my 
praisers at. Come on, come on. Jesus, take your place. And I'm glad to be here. Jesus, take your place. Thank you for another year. Thank you for another year. Thank you for another year. Thank you for 2021. To get excited about a brand new year. Oh, you woke me up this morning. <laughs> Jesus, take your place. Cold in my right mind. Jesus, take your place. Food on the table, clothes on my back, shoes on my feet. Jesus, somebody shout, Jesus. some praisers. Come on, Jesus. In here and out there. Jesus. Oh. <laughs> oh, I wish I had some praisers. The Bible said lift up your voice like a trumpet. Somebody lift up your voice like a trumpet and give God praise. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. in the room no matter what's going on no matter what's going on somebody say Jesus Jesus take your place in me let it start with me If you give me praise, I'll make it all right for you. That's what I hear the Lord saying. If you give me praise, I'll make it all right for you. Somebody lift your hands. Don't get tired. Don't get tired. If somebody had a gun on you, you'd have those hands up in fear. But we're in faith. Glory to God. If you praise me, I'll make it all right for you. Anybody here named Rhonda? You're closely connected to a Rhonda. Lift your hand. How are you connected? I want to pray for her. Lift both hands. Father, we pray for Rhonda. Come on, lift both hands as high as you can get them. We thank you, Father God, for Rhonda. You instructed me to pray for her while we were in worship. And I pray now, Lord God, that every need be met according to your riches and glory by your son Christ Jesus we call it done in Jesus name somebody say heal her now why should you get well soon when you can get well right now glory to God to worship. I don't know what y'all came to do. This is the first Sunday of the year. Man, when I was 16, you'd have to chase me around the room. Glory to God. Don't lose your joy. Don't lose your joy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me slow down. I'm moving too fast. 
presence. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. And I tell you, when I think about everything that happened in 2020, and I think about the goodness of God, the goodness. <laughs> Has he been good to anybody? The goodness of God. Glory to God. Good to see the Andersons. God bless y'all. Ain't God good? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I hear the old school. That was a hey, 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 hey. Yeah, put me in. You gonna put me in Holy Ghost mode right there? Glory to God. Hallelujah. When you think about the goodness of God, Sister Cheryl. He's good, ain't he? <laughs> when I think of his goodness. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. We got a testimony that we want to share. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and with the words of their testimony. And uh, our chief of staff, I call her chief of stuff, because <laughs> a lot of stuff be going on. Uh, Almeida Cruz de Losa, also known as Cookie, affectionately known as Cookie, uh, has a testimony. I want to thank all of you all for your partnership, fellowship, prayerful, and financial support of Fervent Prayer Church. Those of you who are here, those of you who are out there, thank you, thank you, thank you for a tremendous 2021, a 2020, a tremendous 2020. Despite all that was going on, um, you all showed up, stepped up, did just phenomenal, phenomenal things. Our ministry was able to be a blessing to a lot of people in a lot of different ways. Uh, we didn't get worse. We got better. Amen. Some of our members that had health challenges, different health challenges in 2020, God healed them. We thank God for that. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Hobson, for leading the prayer. He's sharp this morning, and he? he's he looked like ten million dollars over there. Look at him, both of them, both of y'all. Like <laughs> uh, one of the most phenomenal couples I know on the planet. Will you all stand real quick, Pastor and Deaconess Hobson? Amen. <laughs> if it wasn't for the mask, you'd have kissed her right there, wouldn't you? <laughs> They're a phenomenal couple. Um, we thank God for you all and my wife, Pastor D, um, who's a, our longest standing men, member. Will you stand? Many daughters have done well. She excels them all. Quintessential example of the Proverbs 31 woman. Uh, amen. And um, my mother, who's not here right now, uh, she's one of our longest standing members also. It's wonderful to have both your mother and your wife as members of the church. And 99.9% .9 of the time, they let me be the lead pastor. <laughs> That's good. That's good. It is good. Amen. So I thank God for that. Um, my daughter who's here, uh, she's... Uh, here <laughs> out of the four she's been here uh, throughout the whole time and it has just been wonderful can you stand please and she works in the ministry in the youth ministry she's gonna be starting a um, Facebook group called leveling up with Landra I think that's still on is that still on I think that's still on so we thank God for that uh, my youngest daughter Jamise she's headed back home she's been out uh, in California for five years 
my wife put up five. I, I, I wasn't sure. But you know, mothers, are they know exactly how much time. They and uh, Jamisa B. Back, she's been a member of uh, um, Dietrich Haddon's church. I'm trying to remember the name of the church, but uh, about four of those years, um, Hill City, Hill City Church in Los Angeles, California. She's worked extensively in their ministry on the praise team and the media department very, very talented. She's on her way back home. She may be watching now. In fact, she's doing a lot of our media stuff. Um, so uh, we thank God for family and my daughter in Hawaii and my daughter in Tennessee. I thank God for my family and my grandson, the gamer. <laughs> Amen. It's good to have family. It's good to have family. Uh, to love your family, to talk about your family, and to appreciate your family. Amen. Amen. And thank you, uh, Pastor Hobson, for leading the giving. Um, I gave a offering commensurate to my tithe today. Uh, it is very rare, and I've been pastoring uh, almost 26, 27 years. It is very rare to see people give an offering that is commensurate or equal to their tithe. Most people give the tithe, which is more, and then the offering might be some change or a couple of dollars. I start the year out. Um, giving the same amount. So whatever my tithe is, that's what I give an offering. And um, God has blessed me because I have a goal for how much money I want to earn in 2021. Amen. Um, because I bless people and I want to be blessed and I bless people. And so for this church of which I'm a pastor, I start out the, the year doing that. I give a lot. My wife gives a lot. And I want to encourage those of you who are out there and those of you who are in here to think about that uh, while you're here. and Think about that today. And should the Lord prompt your heart, because we don't do games and gimmicks here, um, should the Lord speak to you, I want to challenge your faith in giving to give an offering that is commensurate to your tithe. And along with that, throughout the rest of the year, think about doing that. Even if you're not a member of this church, think about doing that and watch the Lord bless you in ways that you haven't even thought about. Amen. So we have a wonderful testimony. Uh, Cookie, share your testimony, please. Amen. First of all, God is good. So, you know, we gave Health Ministry adults something for Christmas, and I was like, well, we can't give the kids the same thing as we give the adults, right? So I was like, you know what? We're going to take them out to the store. So... Took them to the store, I had $1,200, okay? So I had 12 cards that I was supposed to use. So they kept saying, well, what's our limit? I said, I'm not gonna put one on it. If you need it, get it. That's exactly what I said. So when I tell you guys, God is so good, we're in line, we're in number nine, I remember, because I said nine was for complete. <laughs> and so, we're three more people had to go at 700 i was like okay 700 all right i i wasn't even tripping and somebody said cookie you're not scared i was like scared of what and she was like because of the numbers i said who told you to look at the numbers i said keep on going so they kept on going so we're at the we had three more people to go we're at 1200 and i said lord you provide so i said you know what as and nobody knew what i was going through nobody knew i'm just with a smile on my face standing in line i said keep on going keep going so I said, you know what? I got $1,000 in my savings. I'm going to transfer it to my checking to add it to whatever I have in my checking just in case if we go over. Because we remember, we're at $1,200. So I said, okay. I said, God, you supplied in these. As soon as I was went into my, <laughs> to my app, I said, oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I don't even know where this money came from. But when I tell y'all I had money in my bank account, I said, oh, my God. I said, because God, you knew my heart. And so the thing about that is, when I was going to transfer it, because my whole thing was, I'm not going to put it on a church's credit card. I'm going to put it on my own and be a blessing of my own. So when I was able to open up my uh, uh, app and saw all that money, I was like, y'all, did we get our stimulus check? <laughs> they was like, did we? I said, uh-uh, this ain't no stimulus check right here. Oh! No, it's not. I said, this ain't it. I said, but this is God. And then I looked at the um, at number nine, and I'm like, what line we in? We in number nine. I said, it's complete, because he told me that he was going to complete it. I said, oh, my God. When I tell you, everybody was just hollering and screaming. They was like, Cookie, I don't know. I said, this 
Jackson walking on the, by the side of Pastor Jackson, your faith level has to get up. You understand me? Your faith level has to just raise up. I don't care what it is, what you're thinking about doing. You don't know how you're going to get it. Don't even worry about it. Just trust God in the midst of it and believe in God because he's going to work it out. When I tell you God worked that thing out, I said, I hurry up and put my uh, church app. I said, uh-uh, I'm paying my tithes right now. Before I even was paying the bill, I paid my tithes first because I know that God Come on, give God praise for that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Yeah. Glory. We were, we were blessed to help a lot of families. We were blessed with $5,000 over Christmas to give to the community. And we were using up the last of that to bless some families. And uh, Cookie was, as she said, in line with those families. And um, it looked like things were going to run over. And God already prepared it to intersect with that moment. And uh, she was able to make up the difference. And that's what God will do. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. We have communion sacraments, and we're going to do that uh, at the conclusion of the worship. But I do want to pray a little bit, and um, we can hold the music. And I just want to pray a little bit and invite you to get into this prayer here. I want to pray for your family. Pray for your 2021. This is the year of encouragement. There's a lot of churches. There's a lot of themes out there. Thank God for all of them. And the thread running through all of them is Jesus at the end of the day. And so, Father, and I'm asking you, those of you who can, to stand with me as we invoke the presence of the Lord. Father, we thank you and we praise you and we magnify you and we glorify your holy name. You are king of kings, you are lord of lords, you are the mighty God, and nothing is too hard for you. We thank you, Father God, for those whose hearts you touch to be in this room where we are praising you and lifting up your name. And for those who are at home, Father God, we thank you for them. We thank you, Father God, for how you love us. We thank you for the love that you have for us. And God, that you loved us so much that you gave your only begotten son, Jesus, to die for our sins. We thank you for raising him from the dead with all power in his hand. And Jesus, we thank you that before you left, you gave us power. And you said whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. And so even now, we thank you and praise you and magnify you for this season that we're in. And many are wondering, how do we go forward? But God, we thank you that you've always prepared us for every season, for everything that will happen. And so God, we thank you for how that you have prepared us for now. And God, I ask that you would move upon us and help us where our faith is concerned. And God, help us to trust you more as never before. Help us to depend on you, God, and we thank you. I pray for every family that is represented in this room and every family that is watching online and those who are watching the replay. And Father God, for the blessings that you will pour out upon your people. We thank you, Lord God, for you said you withhold no good thing from those who walk up right before you. And so, God, I pray even now that 2021 would be a year of good things. In the name of Jesus, somebody lift up your voice and begin to thank God in advance for good things. God, we thank you for good things happening. God, we thank you for good things. Come on, somebody ought to help me praise him and say, God, I thank you for good things. God, your word said that you will withhold in Psalm 84 no good thing from those who walk up right before you. And so, God, we thank you that even now you have already dispensed the good thing 
And we thank and praise you, Lord God, that somebody who's looking for a wife will find a good thing. And somebody looking for a husband will find a good thing in 2021. Somebody ought to put a praise right there. And God, we thank you and praise you and magnify you. That couple who was believing for children and had not been able to have them. We thank you for good things happening in their bodies, oh God. Even this year, by the end of the year, God, we thank you that they'll see a child. And God, we praise and magnify you that somebody who lost a job will experience a good thing this week. Uh, that they'll get a call and they'll be able to have a new job. We thank you for good things. Uh, and God, we thank you for good things where clothing is concerned. Somebody who don't have bad clothing, somebody that got bad clothing, Father, we pray that you would open up a way for them to have good clothes, Lord God. We thank you for good cars to get to where we need to go. We thank you for good jobs, Lord God. We thank you and praise you. Somebody will lift up a praise. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Come on, exalt his name together. And God, we thank you and praise you and magnify you, Lord God, that you would put good people around us, Lord God. We need good people, Lord God. Put good people in our lives in the name of Jesus. And for those who own businesses, God, we pray for good contracts, good deals, good employees, oh God. We thank you for good opportunities and something good to, to happen for that business owner in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you for your word said that all good and perfect things come down from you. And God, we pray for good things. In the old church, we used to say, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. And so for a few moments, God, we're going to praise your name in here. And somebody who's watching, go praise your name, Lord God. We didn't come to see nobody, but we came to praise you, Lord God. We came to lift up your name. I feel the Holy Ghost in the building. We came to praise your name and to lift you up, Lord God. We see in your word when they had a great prayer meeting there in 2 Chronicles 6. And Lord God, the man of God said, if your people, uh, which are called by your name, would humble themselves, pray and seek your face, uh, and turn from their wicked ways, will you, will you heal the land, God? And you said in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, in answer to Solomon's prayer in 2 Chronicles 6, uh, yes, indeed, if my people, uh, which are called by my name, uh, and every single person in this building and those who are watching uh, are called by the name of God Christians, uh, and God, we call on you this morning, uh, and we cry out to you this morning, Lord God. Uh, I wish somebody would help me get into the spirit, uh, get into the spirit and out of the flesh this morning. Uh, and let's make a connection with God. Uh, God, we thank you for your word. You said that you would hear our prayers and that you would heal our land. So God, we thank you for healing right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for healing our land, God. We thank you for healing our homes, Lord God. Somebody ought to give God praise for the healing of your house. Somebody ought to give God praise for the healing of your house. If you're sick right now, I decree your healing. That God won't let you leave here sick. But I decree and declare you're healed right now. God, you said you would heal our land. You would forgive our sins and heal our land. So God, we thank you for healing our finances. And we thank you for healing our bodies. And we thank you for healing our emotions. And we thank you for healing our thought life. And we thank you for healing our finances. And we thank you for healing our businesses. And we thank you for healing our marriages. And we thank you for healing our children. Satan, you are a liar. And you got to go right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody came in here depressed. But you got to be lifted right now in the name of Jesus. Depression cannot rule here. 
there. We subdue you according to Genesis 1. You got to go right now in the name of Jesus and let the people of God go. And God, we pray even right now as you sent the Holy Ghost to get Peter out of jail. Send your power right now and hit this building in the name of Jesus until the chains come off of somebody's mind, until the chains come off of somebody's emotions, until the chains come off of somebody's relationship in the name of Jesus. Somebody ought to shout, I'm free this morning in the name of Jesus. And the Bible said, he that the sun sets free is free indeed. God we give you praise and we give you glory right now I feel the Holy Ghost in here we give you praise and glory right here right now we give you praise and glory right here right now and the blessings of increase for 2021 I speak healing over your 2021 I speak deliverance over your 2021 I speak love over your 2021 I speak breakthrough over your 2021 in the name of Jesus 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 somebody ought to give him praise until you feel the Holy Ghost move all through your body and mind in the name of Jesus God we give you praise 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 the devil is defeated in the name of Jesus and you have the victory somebody shout I got the victory I got the victory I got the victory I got the victory my house got the victory my marriage got the victory my children got the victory my business got the victory my ministry got the victory my city got the victory in the name of Jesus and God we give you praise right here right now we give you glory and honor and praise for the wonderful thing that you have done and we're not gonna wait till breakthrough come to then give you praise but we're gonna give you praise right here right now in the name of Jesus we're gonna lift up our voices like trumpets to give you praise Lord God the devil thought he had us in 2020 but you blessed us Lord God to come over to a new year and we thank you for new blessings we thank you for new mercy we thank you for new joy we thank you for new things somebody shout new things new things that's what I hear the Holy Ghost saying new things new things look at somebody on your row and say new things look at somebody you came with and say new things new things new things new things new things behold I do a new thing yes new thing new things and for everybody that got new things right now and for everybody that's experiencing something new, you ought to give God praise. New things. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody say new things. New things. New things. New energy. New health. New insight. New contracts. New deals. New money. In the name of Jesus new relationships new things 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 
I wish I could run. I said new things. I feel like running through troops and leaping over walls. New things. Now I want you to think about the old stuff. Monica, the old stuff. And we're not going to put our mind on the old stuff. But we're looking ahead unto Jesus who's the author and the finisher of our faith. For something new. Glory to God. Glory to God. Give God praise for new things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will do a new thing for you. I will do a new thing for you. Whatever you ask for and whatever you pray for nothing shall be denied nothing shall be denied nothing shall be denied said the Lord oh I hear the Holy Spirit Tasha saying that I will do a new thing for you I will do a new thing for you anybody here named Michael are you closely connected how are you how are you connected your son's name is Michael your son your son <laughs> your son Michael lift both hands for Michael and God we thank you you can do it and we thank you that Michael is healed and the Lord showed me the word successful God gives success and we pray that God give him success that God give him success that God gives him success Michael in the name of Jesus, we call you successful. In the distractions, we bind them in the name of Jesus. Anything that is holding him back, in Jesus' name, amen. And the Lord says your love for his word, lift your hands, lift them high, lift them high. Your love for his word is remarkable. Your desire to know God. There will be nothing you want that God won't supply. And I want to say this, don't hold back. You have a zeal for God, a joy for God, and God made you a leader. And you're going to lead from the word of God. There's a gathering anointing on your life. People will gather to you. And you'll be a blessing to them. I think it was Darth Vader said, 
concerning Luke. The force is strong on this one. And the Spirit of the Lord is strong on you. And the blessing of the Lord is on you. There's nothing you need or want that if you ask God for it, you will have no need because of how much you love him. And I want you to give God praise now like what I'm talking about happened yesterday. <laughs> shall be denied nothing shall be denied that's what God said for you nothing 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 shall be denied and that's for you too. Lift your hands right there in the black sweater all the way. Nothing shall be denied. I want you to begin to ask God for the things you need and desire right now. And I set my faith with your hands lifted. I want you to begin to tell God three things that you need him to do for you this year. And I set my faith in agreement with you that it shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And everything you ask God for, for you and your family, according to his word, will be supplied in Jesus' name. Nothing shall be denied, saith the Lord. <laughs> you may be seated. Hallelujah. Does the name Zenith mean anything to anybody in here? Raise your hand. How's that? That's a friend. I said, the Holy Spirit, ain't no way somebody named Zenith. <laughs> not that it's not a great name. It's a wonderful name. But it's unusual. How are you connected to Zenith? Can you stand for him? I'd love to meet him. I'd love to meet him and tell him how much God is going to do for him and through him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God, I pray that you would bless Zenith. You gave me his name. pray for him you gave me his name to pray for him because whatever you do on the earth you do through people you work through people and so even as I have spoken his name Zenith the ministering angels are already gone forth and that he will intersect with the opportunity needed to launch him to the next level Bring him into the presence of the people he needs to know in me in order that you might get to him what you have for him in Jesus' name. Ask somebody you came with, are you ready for God to blow your life up? <laughs> Nothing that is lost is a problem for you. Because God already knew you were going to lose it. Nothing that happens to you should cause you to be stressed out. I prepared something, but I'm in prophetic mode right here. <laughs> God said to Samson's parents, he went out there and married a Philistine woman and he wasn't supposed to and God told him it was of the Lord
what we would say he wasn't supposed to do. What we say was wrong. God said, it was of me. Because Samson would go on to kill a lot of Philistines who were the enemies of God. And so God's purposes were carried out. So often we get stressed out about stuff that happens in our lives. And when that happens, we ought to check. Do a, people do sweat check, but do a faith check. Folks be sweating and they get on social media. They say sweat check, sweat all over the place. Anybody sweating faith in here? Anybody sweating faith in here? And do a faith check. Say, Lord, I believe. I believe. I believe. And my sister here sitting next to Cheryl. Just lift one hand. You don't even have to stand if you don't. There's a wealth anointing on you. I don't know you. But if you will do more of whatever it is you called to do, God going to lay his hand heavy on it. And he gave me the word expand. And expand it. And increase it. And so you'll be more blessed in 2021 than you've ever been before. In Jesus' name. According to my words. The windows of heaven are open. The windows of heaven are open. Glory to God. Glory to God. And we thank God for it. First Samuel 30. Let me give you my little Christmas speech. <laughs> my New Year's speech here. Amen. I am a Christian. That's our theme for this month. I am a Christian. And I want to talk about the importance of being a Christian and how to identify a Christian and how to be a Christian over the next few weeks. We won't cover all that now. Before we get into uh, talking about being a Christian, we got to get into making sure that we are ready for what God is trying to do with us and through us. Because sometimes discouragement stops us from being everything that God wants us to be. You see, Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. So as a Christian, if I am really living like God want me to live, I'm not talking about having nice things or anything like that. That has its place. But I'm talking about if I am living out the believer's life, if I am truly allowing Galatians 5 to feel my heart, my spirit, the real me in me, then I will rarely be discouraged. That's not to say that I will never be discouraged, but how can my light shine if it's shrouded by discouragement? See, if my light is not shining, then men and women cannot or will not glorify him. So before we can help you to make Christians and to be a Christian, we got to get you into the place where you can be a good one. Now, here's the thing, Pastor Hobson. There are a lot of people who are saved, but they are not Christians. <laughs> there are believers, but not everybody that's a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ is a Christian. 
Doesn't mean you're not going to heaven. If you saved, you will make it. If you receive Jesus as your personal Savior, believe God sent him, believe that he died, and believe that God raised him from the dead, you are saved. I'm overwhelmed by your enthusiasm that you are saved. <laughs> I am saved. Anybody, anybody still excited about being saved? When I was growing up, it was challenging to go to school at 11 and 12 and 13 and 14 and 15 and say, I am saved. <laughs> and I found that it's not only a challenge at 11, 12, and 13, it can be a challenge at 23, 33, 43, and 53 to let other people know I am saved. Especially in the 21st century where a lot of people don't even believe in God. They call them nuns, not N-U-N-S. They call them nuns or N-O-N-E-S, meaning that they subscribe to no religion. They're not even atheists. They don't believe in God. They just none. And after all that has happened, the global pandemic, everything that's happened, everything that's happening all the loss, all the stuff that has happened, can you still say, I am saved? And that my salvation is not dependent upon the climate of the country. That my salvation and my love for God and the things of God is not dependent upon my bank account, my savings. The kind of house I live in, the car. No, no, I thank God for that. But I'm saved. And I am a Christian. See, in John 8 and 31, he said, if you continue in my word. See, the first step is to receive him as your personal savior. And then, Vanessa, he said, if you continue in my word. What's implicit in the text is there are people who start, but they don't continue. And at this season, you have to make sure you are continuing in what you started in. Do you still believe? Do you still believe? In fact, the Bible says when Jesus comes back, will he find faith on earth? I want to be in the number. In fact, I don't just want to be in the number. I can definitively say I will be in the number. I'm saved. And I am a Christian. Are you tracking with me? If you continue in my word, you shall become my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth. And the truth will make you free. See, the only way you can really be free is through continuing in the word of God. And that is reading his word every day. And I encourage people to read three chapters a day, five on Sunday. And I've set a goal to do better than that. And I started uh, on yesterday with reading Genesis 1 and 1, King James. I'm back to the King James Version. Back to the King James Version, starting with Genesis 1 and 1 and reading five chapters in the morning and five chapters in the evening. And my goal is 10 chapters a day. But if it's one verse a day and two on Sunday, if it take you the rest of your life, read the whole Bible. A few scattering amens and opera hand claps. <laughs> but unless you get excited about the word of God, and stay in the word of God, you won't be able to make it. <clears throat> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you a Christian? Yes, I'm a believer, but are you a Christian? Because to be a Christian means you have to be Christ-like. Kimberly, we have to be Christ-like. That's what it means to be a Christian. In the book of Acts, it says, Jamie, that's where they were first called or identified as Christians. Why? Because they reminded everybody of Jesus Christ. 
So if my life, and we're all working on it all the time, that is not to say that we have it 100%, but if you don't have it 100%, you should be working on it. To say, I want to be Christ-like. It's not what Jesus do, would do. It's not what Jesus would do. What are you going to do? Y'all remember that wristband? You don't see it much anymore. <laughs> what would Jesus do? I guess that emoticon. But if you read your Bible, you'll find out what Jesus would do. Because, see, Jesus, and we got to work it out. Because there's a lot of people, you know, I was driving, and um, I'm sure people have cussed me out. Because, you know, you're driving, and some stuff you don't even do on purpose. And people will cut around you and stop and act like they're going to run you off the road and all that. Roll rage. I don't, I don't even make eye contact. I'm just like this. Because in my spirit, digging his hops in the word of God said, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. That's what Jesus would do. No, Jesus, Jesus, if he's driving down I-38, I call this I-38. If he's, if he's driving down I-38, how many of y'all know about I-38? If, if you're driving down I-38 and, and, and somebody got road rage and they do this to you, then what is the first reaction? To do to them what they did to you. But that's not what Jesus would do. See, Jesus said, love those that hate you. Pray for those that despitefully use you. Is that what Jesus said? See, that's what being and bless those that curse you. You, you, you saying that I am to bless people that curse me? Absolutely. Because that's what Jesus would do. Are you ready to be a Christian? Or do you want to stop at being saved? See, Christian is the next level. It don't mean you better than anybody else because really to be a Christian requires a lot of sacrifice and humility. It takes more to be a Christian than it does. It takes more courage to be a Christian and, and, and more humility to be a Christian than anything else. You're talking about being strong? It takes a whole lot of strength to be a Christian. And sometimes when we get to that love those that hate you, that's the Sermon on the Mount. One of the, one of the people that you have to learn to love are the people in your family. Because make no mistake about it, there are people in your family that don't really love you. I'm not going to say they hate you. I'm just going to say they don't love you. And yet, the Bible says you love them anyway. Because what? Pastor Cheryl, you're a Christian. See, being a Christian can be monitored. It can be measured because we can see it. Being a Christian is not how I feel. Being a Christian is how I live. And I have to live this out by faith. So the first person I have to treat right is my wife. The loudest amen I got. I got. <laughs> and you work on that. And to treat your children right. <laughs> uh, let me move on because y'all ain't checking with me on that. Because we live in a society now where people don't like treating people right. Most of the homicides in Indianapolis are the result of some uh, beef. I'm not talking about a steak either. Because people beefing, is that how you say it? They were beefing. In other words, they had an issue with one another and they couldn't work it out. And it escalated into violence. That's why we need more Christians. Now, we can't expect people out there to do it right if we can't get it right in here 
because you got people in the church be beefing. And they don't necessarily pull out a gun and kill one another, but they use that mouth like a Glock. <laughs> Six pounds of pressure. They pull that Glock, boy, and will tear you up kill your character, assassinate your integrity. And then go tell people they are Christian. Everybody shouting, everybody speaking in tongue, everybody oh my mama said na na they ain't, they ain't Christians. A donkey can speak for God. The Bible called a jackass. They can speak for God. So not everybody that say they speaking for God is a Christian. God said in this decade, I'm looking for Christians because without Christians, there's no light. And if there's no light, the antithesis of light is darkness. Without light, we live in darkness. Even though we got saved people. It's like a flashlight with no batteries. Oh, the batteries are in there. I said, the batteries are in there. And the problem now, uh, as a result of uh, Labria, as a result of pastoral oversight, is that the batteries are in there, but they haven't been used, and the batteries are corroded, and not only have the batteries gone bad, but they messed up the device that they're in. God can't even use the church because not only, Brother Anderson, did the batteries go bad, but they leaked. And, and, and that... that that corrosive material that leaks out of the battery messes up the thing called the church. Uh, Y'all better come and get me. I feel like running through troops and leaping over walls. I, I, I better slow down because the camera won't be able to keep, keep up with me. We got this virtual reality thing. And it has a battery in the controller and my wife has one and I have one I used to have it where you could play games with one another in there and they you know but she had one and she hadn't used it in a while and the controller wasn't working and I got it and opened it up and and the acid had leaked out of the battery so I took the battery out and I cleaned all the corrosion out and everything got it all cleaned up and I took a brand new battery and put it in there and it still wouldn't work. And I worked on a little more and worked on a little more and it still wouldn't work. And because the controller was bad, it made the whole system bad. And you couldn't take a new battery, a new Christian, and put it in the system. <laughs> you couldn't take young people who wanna be saved and put it in, in the church because the church so messed up with so-called Christians that they say, I don't even want to be a part of that. Because guess what? When you say you saved and you say you're a Christian, people are watching. They looking at you. Tell somebody they looking at you. And you know what we Christians say? What you looking at? Don't judge me. Y'all ever hear anybody say that? We do what we want to do. Say what we want to say. Go what we want to go. Smoke what we want to smoke. Drink what we want to drink. Do whatever we want to do. And say we Christians. And when people look at us, we say, who you looking at? Mind your own business. What? Y'all know when people get to that point, what? Christians. Christian. I 
I'm trying to get to the text, but I'm in prophetic mode. Y'all want me to come out of prophetic mode and go to the text right there? The Apostle Paul said, Pastor D, some of the stuff, it has been reported, he said some of the stuff that's going on in the church ain't even happening in the world. <laughs> that's in your Bible. He said it's been commonly reported. <laughs> Not just reported. He said it's been commonly reported that the stuff that's going on in the church is not even happening in the world. As we emerge from COVID-19, as the churches, the physical worship space starts opening back up, I wonder if we'll have Christians or will we go back to just having church? I call it brand church. Everybody brand out there. Everybody's brand is out there. God don't care nothing about your brand. If didn't nobody get saved, if didn't nobody get baptized, if didn't nobody get filled with the Holy Ghost, if everybody's life is still jacked up, I mean, come on, what are we doing? If nobody's getting healed, if demons are not being cast out, Christians, where they at though? <laughs> I said, Christians, where they at though? Ask somebody you came with, are you a Christian? Did they say what? <laughs> now that is not to say, as Paul said, Paul said, you know, I'm, Paul said, I'm striving for that. He said, it's not that I've already obtained it. The good that I would do, I don't do. And the very thing that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. He said, what is it then? It's the law of sin that's working in my flesh. And we all have that. But we're battling with the flesh. I know you want to be a Christian. And we need young people to be Christians. <laughs> to be a shining light. I don't want to be a Jonah. If God called you to do something, do it. Don't run away from the will of God for your life because you said, I'm not a, I'm not a Christian yet. I, I'd rather, I'd rather uh, uh, stay away dirty. <laughs> you ever heard that? I, I just rather stay away dirty. I, 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 I start coming to the church when I get myself together. No, the church is the hospital. If you get shot, you don't call the hospital and say, I'll, I'll, I'll be over there when I get better. No, you're like, I'm shot. Come and get me now. That's the church. We exist to help you become what God has called you to be. <laughs> uh, let me close with this right here. I am a Christian. I'm going to tell you how to be a Christian if you come back. If you, <laughs> if you tune back in. I want, I am and I want to be a Christian. I'm working on it all the time. And will you all make a commitment to be a Christian in 2021? Yeah. You want to work on that? Starting at home. I knew my mother was saved and a Christian. She lived that out in front of us. And we grew up in the Pentecostal church. Not only were you a Christian on the inside, you had to look like one. <laughs> we, pro you know, the church probably wounded a whole lot of people because you had to look like it on the outside. But see, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about you a Christian because you wear a dress every day. I could tell you some stories about that. That part. See, wearing a dress don't make you a Christian.
So I said, don't say it, don't. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Not wearing earrings don't make you a Christian. Not wearing rules on your face don't make you a Christian. Not putting a pancake on your face don't make you a Christian. That's what you call the pancake, the makeup. You're not Jezebel because they, you know, you're not, Je, Je, you know, people say, well, she's Jezebel because she got rouge on her lips. She's Jezebel because she got, no, Jezebel was a prophet killer. And there were people who didn't have makeup on, who wore dresses, and they killed more people than the person with that mouth. <laughs> Let me give y'all one verse so you can say I came to church and I But if you run it back, I gave you a lot of verses. We more concerned. See, pre-COVID, a lot of us pastors were more concerned about filling the church up with people than the church being filled with God. And I was telling my staff, I'm not going to spend another dollar on people coming in, singing, and performing, and nobody gets saved. Just because everybody know about them and they can sing and they go, Ooh. no, I ain't spending a dollar. If I don't, if I don't read that you have a track record of people getting saved behind your singing ministry, and if people ain't getting saved and changed by your preaching ministry, We building a team of musicians who love God and will be Christians. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I told them, if you own the instruments, you're in the booth, you're in, in the eagle's nest up there, or you're out in the parking lot, be a Christian. <laughs> or we have to put you back in the congregation. That's pastoring me. Don't let me, don't let me be in the church and, and, and live my life and die and then go to hell. You mean to tell me you, you went to church on Sundays and Bible studies and, and you received the tithe and the offering and then you don't make it? Because the shepherd didn't shepherd the sheep. And guess what? If you don't make it, if you look next to you down in hell, you're going to see the preacher right next to you. And I said, Lord, don't let it be me. Now, I, don't, I know that makes you uncomfortable because pre-COVID, you didn't hear a lot about hell. <laughs> but it's a real place. And guess what? If you go to hell, you're going to have memory. And you'll still be you in hell. And you'll still be you in heaven. I told my wife maybe I'll preach a sermon called A Message from Hell for those on the way. Is that too, is that too, is that too gangster? Is that, is that too G? a lot of people don't believe in hell <laughs> I'm going to end with this right here we had a guy <laughs> it's years and years ago he joined our church and he caught me after church he said pastor he said uh, I love your ministry he said I love your ministry because you never talk about hell 
I said, praise the Lord. Because it was early in the year and I was talking about the blessings of giving. He was loving it, man. But see, the problem was <laughs> the next series... required me to talk a lot about hell. And the same guy that was hallelujah and glory to God, when I started talking about hell, he left. Because he didn't want to hear about hell. It's like my grandson. He loved eating Pop-Tarts, chicken nuggets, and drinking cranberry juice. <laughs> and the little girl in the front saying, yeah, that's... I said, drink some water. Water? I took, with me, I took him with me to Wendy's, and I said, you want a hamburger? He said, no, it got a salad on it. Because, you know, at Wendy's, they put lettuce and tomato. And that's the kind of church we want. We want... We want one of them uh, Wonder Burgers, Impossible Burgers. It, it's supposed to be meat, but it's a whole bunch of stuff ground up and they call it meat. But see, this gospel is meat. And what the church have been missing is meat. I want to be a Christian. I want to represent Jesus Christ. You say, Pastor, I want to be a Christian too. Stand on your feet and at home, stand on your feet. Glory to God. I had a whole keynote presentation. Slides and scriptures. <laughs> First Samuel 31 through 8. But, you know, sometimes God grab a hold of me. And I'm just different. And it took me, the Lord willing, I'll be 54 this year. I know you can't tell it. <laughs> I'm still, by the power of God, faster than a speeding bullet more powerful than a locomotive. I can leap over walls in a single bound. <laughs> I thank God for that. And it took me 52 years to embrace my own difference. Really 53. And so I said, well, I'm going to help other people to embrace their difference sooner so we can see how you're different. Because unless you embrace your own difference, you always be trying to please everybody else. You ever notice that? You dress different from other people. You act different from other people. You were born with the body you got, and you still got a problem with it. Just work what you got. Embrace your own difference. Love yourself, because guess what? If you don't love you, you can't love me. Just lift one hand, those of you who are at home, and on my couch cam over here. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your grace and for your mercy. We thank you for your love and for your kindness and for every person whose heart that you've touched to be with us on today. Help us to be everything your word says we can be. Help us to do everything your word says we can do. We thank you for saving us. Help us to continue in your word. We want to be Christ-like. We want to be Christians. God, whenever... We do things that we're not supposed to do. Don't ever let us lose 
our consciousness about it. Don't ever let us lose our conviction about it. And then help us to change it. For it is in you that we live and move and have our being. Without you, we can't do it. You said you will keep that that we've committed unto you until the coming of Jesus Christ. And God, we thank you for this new year. Give us strength to go forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Remain standing, if you will. If you want to be saved, raise your hand. I want to pray for you. You say, I'm not a Christian. I'm not saved. But I want to be saved. Raise your hand. If you're saved and you would like to join this church today, the Lord is speaking to your heart. Raise your hand. I want to pray for you. We'd love for you to be part of our church. Just raise your hand. Glory to God. Let's give God praise on today. glad to see you, Sister Monica. God bless you. Um, Sister Kimberly, God bless you. And all of those of you who have not been uh, here since March, we love you. We thank God for you. We can't wait to give you the chicken wing. <laughs> Amen. We're going to receive communion. I will need one of those. I think mine is over there. I want to prepare you for communion. Yes, I'm a believer. Yes, you remember that one? I'm a believer. Yes, I'm a believer. Oh, yes. You remember that one? I'm a believer. You all come on up. I believe in Jesus Christ. He's the giver of all life. You know that one? <laughs> yeah, come on, come on up here and help us with that. Come on up here and help us with that. I know you're not shy. Come on up here and help us with that. Y'all get her a mic, get her a clean mic. So we're going to sing that. And Jasha, look it up real quick on YouTube so you can get the key and everything. Amen. These are old songs. You were, you were probably five when that one came out. <laughs> but I know you can get it. Who, who wrote that one? Yes, I'm a believer. Oh, yes. I'm a believer. All right. If you have the sacrament, this wafer here, you can go ahead and look it up because we're going to sing it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Fill me with your spirit. Make me all that you want me to be. Father, I thank you and I praise you for your presence in my life. I confess any wrong that I have done all the way back to Adam up to now. Forgive me of all of my sins. Forgive me for all of my transgressions. And I release every person who have transgressed against me. Help me, God, to be a forgiver. Help me to be a Christian. Amen. This wafer represents the body of Jesus Christ that was broken, busted, abused for our sins. The scripture says in Isaiah 53, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. The first healing is spiritual healing. That's the first healing. Spiritual. 
to be healed spiritually is to be saved. And so, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may eat. This beverage represents the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for the sins of the world. The scripture says, without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sins. We thank God for the blood of Jesus. The blood of lambs and goats and pigeons were, were shed as a sacrifice. But Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. Oh, the blood of Jesus it will never lose its power. Jesus, we thank you for your blood. We discern your body. And we thank you that we are healed, delivered, and set free through your blood. In Jesus' name, you may drink. And the scripture says they went out singing. If you'd like to be a member of the church today, you can still do that. Please see our ushers upon conclusion of the service. Y'all have my benediction ready for me? a new benediction there it is thank you lift one hand if you will peace to all of you and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ grace be with all of you who love our Lord Jesus in sincerity amen and traveling grace be with you in good portion. God bless you. All right. Let's get it. Yeah. Happy New Year, FPC. Check out how we're kicking off 2021 yeah. Prayer. Join us every morning for prayer on our morning prayer call. Yeah. Or tune in to first hour prayer with Pastor Jackson. We are at 6.35 a.m. and 7 Members class takes place on Saturday, January 9th at 9 a.m. For more details, email yes, the register there at FPCBelieber. Join us live every week for our small group segments. Last month, Celebrity Saints returned to Mondays at 7 I believe in Jesus Christ. And this month, we will debut two the giver new groups, of my life. Real Relationships, From Heaven and He Total Came Dance, Down, by Pastor Jackson. Oh, what joy Stay tuned I found. after service today for a special Although you were not of Pastor there, Jackson's new group. You don't know when or where. And we see what we I'm a believer. Our worship on Sundays. I'm a believer. A Help me uh, say yes. yes. I'm a believer. Help me stay. Yes. 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 I'm a believer. Come on, if you believe him. Yes. 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 Need some help with your finances after the Grace of Giving series? Well, FPC is having a financial seminar on January 23rd. Email administrator at fpcindy.com to save your spot today. We're in a new year, but that doesn't mean a helping hand isn't needed. If you or your family are in need of anything, please reach out to our member services team by phone at 317-898-2751 extension 104 or by email at administrator at fpcindy.com happy new year fpc check out how we're kicking off 2021 at fervent prayer join us every morning for prayer on our morning prayer call or tune in to first hour prayer with pastor jackson weekdays at 6 35 a.m and when god gives you favor with people you will know where you're supposed to be. Because when you get there, everything is, is just like you need to be. And you ain't got to scratch, and you ain't got to struggle, and you ain't got to fight, and you ain't got to connive, and you ain't got to... You didn't say it, but you ought to say, my name is Bane. Because what God will do is he'll put you in somebody's heart, and they will prepare.